But not too long ago, astronaut Scott Kelly arrived back from the space station. And there's many reports saying that he had grown well in space. He'd gotten taller somehow while in space. Curious person, how would this be? <laughs> Is NASA feeding them magical beans? Is there some sort of magic juice that they're drinking aboard the space station? How is somebody growing up to two inches taller than when they left? It's kind of confusing. So I really want to get down to this and try and figure out why and how that's working. So in order to figure this out, you first need to establish what's going on with your spine and your body while on Earth. So if you want to think about it, that this the spring here is your body on Earth, or your spine specifically on Earth. And at all times it's being compressed down and being held at the same level because of 1G on Earth, Basically, at all times, your body is experiencing 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration downwards. It's gravity, right? It's all being pushed down, and that's why we're that's why we're the height we are. That's why our bones are as dense as they are. That's why everything stays where it is. So at all times, your body's experiencing this, this pressure downwards, condensing your spine and keeping everything in place. Now, how does that translate to in space? So because of weightlessness in space, you would expect there to be a lot less pressure, a lot less gravity down towards the center of Earth while aboard the space station. Well, actually, in fact, you're experiencing 8.6 meters per second squared compared to the 9.8 on Earth. That's not much of a difference. So, so what's causing less pull to create that, that weightlessness in space? Essentially, it's just a free fall. That's all that they're doing on the space station. Imagine for a second the space station is actually something like this ball. When I throw it up in the air like that, it's experiencing temporary weightlessness until I, obviously until I catch it. Just like that. Again, you can imagine something like the drop zone. I'll leave a picture of that. If you're not from Toronto, you don't know what drop zone is, or maybe an amusement park, I'm not sure. I don't know where they are. But essentially, it's a ride that you you go all the way up to the top of this tower, something lets go, and it free falls down back to Earth. That weightlessness you're feeling is the exact same or similar to what they're experiencing in space. So of course, while you're uh, orbiting the Earth, this little ball's in the Earth as you use the space station, or the shuttle. Well, astronauts are orbiting the Earth, they're experiencing that 8.6 uh, meters per second squared pull downwards. At the same time that they're free falling this way, they're actually accelerating or at a velocity that's able to keep them going this way, which creates the orbit. So while they are falling down, they're gonna free fall constantly. And it's the same with on Earth, if I were to do that, or if I were to remove the, the floor from under you at this time right now, you'd experience weightlessness, the same as in on Earth, or sorry, as in space. So it's that weightlessness factor that is really establishing how our bodies react in space. So while astronauts are aboard the space station, that pressure that they usually have here on Earth isn't there, let, allowing their spines and their bodies to kind of grow or expand to what they would be normally without any gravity. So we're not growing well in space. There's no magical formula to actually grow anywhere, as far as we know. It's the fact that here on Earth, we're experiencing that push downwards, in space, we're not so much, allowing the spines to grow. So as soon as Scott Kelly returns back to Earth, or as soon as any other astronaut were to return back to Earth from space, their bodies would start condensing back again, and just like normal, Scott Kelly's back to his normal height. Now, this factor of this weightlessness in space allowing your spine to fully expand like that plays a big factor into a lot of the astronauts' bodies. Their eyes, for example, here on Earth are actually condensed. They're not a, a perfect circle, they're actually more of an oval shape. But in space, without that pressure downwards, they're able to expand and grow, and there's actually a lot of medical issues with astronauts' eyes. So all of this to say that here on Earth, we're experiencing 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration or force downwards. In space, it's 8.6. It's not much difference, but it's that weightlessness factor that's really affecting astronauts. And although it's kind of cool to tell your friends that while you're in space, or tell people that while you're in space, you can actually grow, there's a lot of negative side effects with that. With muscle density, like I said, bone density, your eyes, and muscle atrophy, and all these different issues that are caused because of the weightlessness. Now we have exercise machines and things like that aboard the space station, but for long duration flights like to Mars, it's gonna be an issue. We need, really need to, to look into that. So it might be cool to be temporarily taller a few inches, but it's only temporary, it's not permanent. It's just your spine kind of expanding to what it should be, not to what it should be, to what it is, and then coming back to Earth back to normal. That's about it guys for today's episode. If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment. If you think we earned it, subscribe. That'd be awesome. Support some Patreon. I love making these videos. I love learning about how your body's reacting in different conditions. If you like this, let me know. And thanks a lot for watching.